They have sold more than 50 million records worldwide and have had four number ones here in the UK. Now, the Pet Shop Boys, Chris Lowe and Neil Tennant have a new album, Yes, and a few things to celebrate. They've been making music together for more than a quarter of a century and this year they received an award at the Brits for their outstanding contribution to music. The hits from West End Girls to Opportunities have combined the simplicities of pop with political commentary and clever lyrics. Their new single, Love Etc., is in the same vein and the B-side reflects on our CCTV surveillance society. Pop music, one of its functions is to act as a musical commentary and a soundtrack to what's going on in our lives. Simplicity, which you want in pop music, is actually a difficult thing to do well. The cliché of 10% inspiration, 90% perspiration is very true with pop music as well. It's then finishing the song, finishing the record, um, you know, that, that's often quite hard work. That's only 100% though. <laughs> And you've got to give 110 nowadays. You're 10% missing. <laughs> How important is performing it as opposed to writing it? And we do put a lot into it, um, and, and we try to just keep everything visually exciting, really, and something fresh, and we try to bring in elements that aren't necessarily associated with pop music. First single is anti-materialistic. It's ended up, you know, being quite appropriate for the times. It's saying that, you know, fulfilment is not to be found through shopping and celebrity. A certain amount of enjoyment is maybe, but it's not the be-all and end-all. We've become consumers whose role is in the marketplace. I think it's a very banal way to see oneself, or, um, more worryingly, for governments to see the citizens of the country. In the 80s, we wrote uh, satires on Thatcherism, you know, uh, I've got the money, you've got the books, that's my lots of money. And so there's always, I've always, and, and so Chris felt uneasy about a money culture ruling everything. We're all criminals now, which is about CCTV culture, and John Charles de Menezes and so on. I mean, that is very political, actually. Oh, that's a totally political song. Um, I mean, the song is about someone going to work, saying a bus stop, and there's some CCTV cameras on them. Um, and saying, oh, we're all criminals now, and really, the person in the song witnesses the shooting at Stockwell. What's next for you? We have been working on a ballet for Sadler's Wells Theatre. It's a Hans Christian Andersen story. It's a, sort of like writing a Tchaikovsky ballet uh, in terms of the story, but with contemporary music or Pet Shop Boys music. Daunting? Yes, it is daunting, because it's a lot of music. But what's interesting is you're telling a story through the music and dance. It's not just abstract. This is specifically narrative. So it'll be interesting to see whether it works, actually. They've always got something new to say, but do, do they have something new to say musically, do you think? Well, I think that's not actually the point of the Pet Shop Boys. The point of the Pet Shop Boys is they keep doing the Pet Shop Boys over and over, and if you like the Pet Shop Boys, that is a good thing. It's, this LP is interesting because they uh, quite bravely, one might say, have engaged the uh, produ production talents of Xenomania, which is um, uh, a basically a production powerhouse, but more associated with more conventional pop music, such as Girls Aloud and Britney. And there are other kind of what you might call more alternative bands who've tried to do this. Franz Ferdinand employed Xenomania on the last LP, and they couldn't work with them because they've got a very specific way of working. The Pet Shop Boys on this LP, I think, work best when they sound really like the Pet Shop Boys but with Xenomania kind of coming underneath it. When it doesn't work, I think, is when they sound a bit more Xenomaniac. <laughs> and uh, there's a couple of songs where, I, uh, where it sounds to me a little bit like kind of Girls Aloud Rejects. But when they get it right, and they get it right on about three or four songs in this LP, it's completely fantastic. Did you see me coming? Was that oh, one? I love that, that song. Good, it, it starts off and you hear this sound and you think, God, that sounds exactly like Johnny Marr. And then you think, it is, it's yeah. Johnny Marr. How brilliant. <laughs> and then it launches into this absolutely ace Pet Shop Boys chorus. I mean, I just couldn't stop playing that song. It's fantastic. And the other thing that I think is interesting about this LP is it's about love. It's absolutely all about love. I mean, although, you know, Neil professes that there's bits in here that's about consumerism, essentially it's about love and it's about a kind of older love, regrets, um, will somebody come back, my memories, falling in love again. I mean, it's a very interesting because of that, I think.
I slightly prefer your interpretation of it than the, than the record itself, and I often find this, that I like them in interviews more than I actually like the music. You know, the, all the wit and erudition that everyone always goes on about with them. It is there. I mean, this line about, you know, you don't have to be in who's who to know what's what. Uh, lines like that, which I, you like. I find the music, though, tuneful and pleasant, but repetitive. And I think when you say that they are just, they do the Pet Shop Boys thing over and over, I think that's true. Uh, but I, would, I was looking for them to do something a bit different and to push the boat a bit. Instead, it can be very easy on the ear, quite agreeable. I like the Johnny Marr guitar bit too. Um, but, you know, it can have, there's a sort of Muzak risk where it just plays and plays and one song sort of, you know, bleeds seamlessly and pleasantly into the other. I was expecting them, you know, because they, they think clearly in interviews, etc. they are imaginative to have pushed the boundaries a bit musically rather than just in the interviews, you know. Okay. Um, well, I think it's a pretty good Pet Shop Boys uh, CD, and I think that there's stuff on there that's as good as Paninaro or Being Boring, and all you know the stuff that made me fall in love with the Pet Shop Boys in the first place. Um, for me, it was a little bit of an anticlimax after their incredible appearance at the Brits, um, where in less than 10 minutes they did what every band that's been around for 25 or more years has to say to their audience, which is, remember how much you loved us. You know, remember mm. how much you needed us. Remember that we were important. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's a dilemma that pop music never really um, faced in the past, you know, because someone would choke to death on their own vomit and they'd break <laughs> up and that would be it. You wouldn't have to worry about them dogging you into middle age and old age. And um, someone said to me, you know, did you see it? Did you see the Pitchfork Boys? Incredible. You can't, you've got to watch it. You've got to watch it. And I watched it on YouTube and I did think, yeah, I remember. I remember how much I loved them. I remember how great I thought they were. Um, and there are certainly, there are certainly flashes on, on, on uh, this CD. But it is, they, they face that dilemma that most bands face. You know, there's only, you interviewed John Squire recently, and he said, I'm never reforming the Stone Roses. Um, you know, it's a young man's game. But apart from the Stone Roses, almost every band, whether they break up or they stick together like Petrol Boys, sooner or later they have to say to their audience, Remember us. Yeah. Remember and how much you loved us. And who is the audience now? That's the other question. Is it, is it the people who always loved them, or is there a new audience, or, or, I'd or not? I'd be surprised if there was a new audience for the Pet Shop Boys. Although I have to say, you know, these days you can just pick and choose so much that if you did watch the Brits as a young yeah, person, if you were a sixteen-year-old kid and you see Lady Gaga walking on stage, exactly. you see Brand and Flowers saying, "I could have bought a Smiths uh, LP and or a Pet Shop Boys, Boys yeah. and I chose the Pet Shop Boys." And if you're a Killers fan, you didn't. You were certainly of intros them out. And, and, and songs on here where you would think, if you're a Girls Aloud fan, you'd yeah. be thinking, "Wow, you've just discovered some new outfit because you can dance to these, and they're all they're all there." Yeah, you things know. are slightly different these days, aren't they? People pick and choose in a way that they didn't used to. And the Pet Shop Boys have got a hardcore of fans that are always going to buy every. But Pet I, Shop I think you're right about we look for something different from the older artist and partly what we look for is the virtue of their age that they have some maturity they've got something extra to say and i think this is partly in his voice this very sort of stainless steel almost you know perfect <laughs> yeah, voice wonderfully for synth english. you're the most english man in pop music it ever lend, it doesn't lend itself to emotional engagement but it's when it's this sort of state you know this very semi-robotic uh, perfect for 80s synth pop but it, it, it can't get elegiac voice, or melancholic though. but well, it's a pop voice i mean the, yeah. the point of it is there's an ache there's a yearning within that voice that englishness it's not a kind of operatic voice it's a no. pop voice and there's uh, something different I just think. wait for the ballet uh, <laughs> yes by the pet shop boys is released by parlophone on monday now